Well, hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts. And today I'm going to do a little tutorial for a blanket that Hannah designed. It's called the Under the Seas Blanket. This is just a sample. She's already gifted the blanket to a friend. Uh, and we released the pattern last week, but there were so many of you who loved this and needed a video tutorial. So I told her I would work up a quick little swatch this is the mesh stitch. You'll be learning how to do these puffs. And she put an adorable little scalloped border around. So um, anyway, it's very simple. Um, so I think you just really need, you know, the counting here, 10 rows, five rows in between. And you can tell, here's my little puffs. I don't do the full blanket tutorial. You can see the pictures. These are like little floating dots that are in between. I wish they had the whole blanket, but the full picture is on um, daisyfarmcrafts.com and the link will be a uh, link to that if you're only seeing it on YouTube, of course, is down in the comments or not the comments, the uh, description uh, box. So anyway, let's get started. Um, she used Bernat's Baby Softy Cotton which we love, and age size G hook. I recommend the Susan Bates so that you can really use this point to pull through for these puffs. So anyway, that's just my suggestion, but do what, what you're comfortable with. So let's get started. All right, well, let's just start with the pattern repeat for this blanket, which is 12 times any number plus 10. So for this sample, let's work 34 chains. Okay, so the first row is going to be the mesh stitch, which is simply beginning in the second chain from the hook, Start with a single crochet and chain one. Then skip the next chain and work single crochet into the next. Chain one, skip the next single or the next chain, single crochet into the next. So this is basically what is called the mesh stitch. So you're you know, working a single crochet, chaining one and skipping a chain below or chaining across the chain below. Sometimes um, I'll say, so work this stitch all along the first row. And your last stitch, if you've chained correctly, should end in a single crochet. So when we start with 34 chains, the turning chain is one and that leaves us with 33 chains to work into, which we like that odd number because then we can begin the row with a single crochet and end the row with a single crochet. Well, how did you do? Hopefully it worked out nice and evenly for you. And now we will chain one and turn. So now hopefully since we've got that chain one space right there, it's real easy for you to see where the first stitch is of the row, that first single crochet, chain one, I mean single crochet right into it chain one across the chain one below and you're looking for the uh, the single crochet right there work underneath both of the v's and we're going to work this mesh stitch again we're going to do this for a total of nine rows before we work any of the little dots So I just wanna make sure that you can see where I'm working 
into the single crochets and underneath both of the V's. I think this could be a really great introduction into baubles um, on your beginning journey, journey after you've really got a handle on, you know, alternating stitches. This is a cute one. I also, Hannah and I really love to work with this mesh stitch we're finding when we do have a lot of counting with the bubble bobbles or whatever we decide the dots because it kind of helps keep, if it's all single crochet, it's hard, it's really easy to get off track of counting single crochets all in a row. And so kind of the chains help um, keep you on track with your counting. You'll see as you work this blanket, but that's what we've kind of found. It's very helpful to know the exact single crochet to work into. All right, here I am at the end of the row. Don't forget that we always end the row with a single crochet. There we go. Sometimes that little that back V was a little hidden and I'm chaining one and turning. That was row two. All right, we're gonna work this for nine rows. I'll meet you back. Here are my nine rows. So if you're having a hard time counting, maybe before, when you finish the ninth, make sure your little starting tail is over here on the left. Chain one and turn your work. And I always say like a page in a book, kind of keeps it really consistent, keeps your edges looking the same. And this is row 10. We're going to add puffs, little baubles, little clusters, <laughs> so many names for the same little thing, same idea. Start with the mesh stitch, chain one, skip one, We're going to work this mesh stitch across the next five single crochets. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and chain one. We're going to chain one across that one we are working the puffs into this single crochet right here so the puff is insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over do it again and one last time One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loops on my hook. We're gonna pull through just like that. Now chain one because that's where we would, you know, be chaining across right there, the chain one that's on the other side, and then begin that mesh stitch. Let's do that again. Let's make sure there's five single crochets. And chain ones. And now let's work that puff right here. So you yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, and let's do that three more times. Here's one, two, three. Kind of keep them a little bit loose. Definitely it helps to have this Susan Bates hook 
Sometimes this yarn can be a little bit splitty. There we go. Chain one, skip the chain one, and here's our single crochet down there. Yay! All right, now we just finish the mesh stitch. Of course, if you have a, you know, you'll be working that across the row every five single crochets and chain ones. Make sure you're chaining one, then puff. The puff is just simply replacing the single crochet in that sequence. There's our little puffs. All right, that was row 10. Now on row 11 to 15, we're back to working just the mesh stitch. Let's make sure you catch the cluster, or sorry, the puff and work a single crochet into it, just to keep the counting all even. So chain across, and you can kind of see there's three little Vs across. This one would be your chain. Here's the actual, you know what, puff, it's the, the little V in the middle, right there chain across the chain and work the single crochet. So I think that kind of helps to, um, that's what I was talking about before. It just really does help to have this mesh pattern as the base because it kind of helps you find, keeps your single crochets on, chat, on track. You're not like trying to figure out which single crochet it is, just, if that was the chain, here we go. In the middle, always chain, there we go. All right, I'll come back after I've got those next rows. I think we do our next little, well, Hannah thought they looked just like little bubbles coming up from the sea. I thought that was so cute. Um, if you've seen the blog post, she has a matching little under the sea jammy that she found to gift for her friend and uh, just such a cute idea. All right, here we go. Well, we just did five rows. Here's, that was the end of row 15. If you wanna pay attention to that little thing in case these are just, uh, I'd say that's the trickiest thing is to count. I kind of just count these little V's. One, two, three, four, five. So chain one. Sorry, I already chained one. Turn your work. And here we go. We're going to repeat row 10. So this is another little puff row. So same thing again. We are working after onto that sixth single crochet. Kind of is another way to look at it. And it is much easier to just count the single crochets, of course. There's the chain ones in between, like that. So I've worked one, two, three, four, five. Here I am. And that's what I'm saying. Don't trust looking below. It looks off, but it's not. This is the one that'll be directly below that. We're going to work that little puff if you remember, get all those loops on there and then pull through. There we go. Get the chain one in after and then continue working. All right, so you put five rows in between each of these little puff rows. So there's another five rows to go after this. And then we will change the position. And the next section will be worked in between. So one, two, three, four, five. Oops, that's my puff row. I mean, my puff spot. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and then do it three more times. One, two, 
three. Really turn your hook to face it down. Chain one, single crochet. You'll get into a rhythm of this and it'll become really relaxing and nice. It's just always hard to get the initial count, your, you know, your brain wrapped around that initial counting, but five rows in between, and then, you know, five single crochets in between, that will start to make sense. Oh, they're so cute, and she's made them in these little puffs, I think, so that we can kind of see them on both sides of the blanket. That's one good thing about doing, a, doing that stitch. They're not necessarily, um, you know, polka dots that are really poking forward. They're kind of just little indentations in the blanket. So, all right, another five rows, another row of, of puff, and then we will switch the location of the puffs. So I have five rows now in between. I am working on row 32 of the pattern, which Really, the only, um, it's a simple change, it's just for counting. We're going to work into the first eight single crochets. And that puff will be on single crochet number nine. So, here we go. And that should end up to be right in the middle of these other little our other little bubbles. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's where we usually would have put one. So we're continuing on. Here's number seven. Always chaining one in between eight and chain one. Now in the single crochet, let's work that puff. One more over. Pull through, make sure you chain one, look for that next single crochet, and let's go back to, now one thing is it's not always on number nine, that's just from the outer edge, just to get this right here in the middle. Now we're back to counting five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Work on that sixth, that would be in between. Now, since we just did a little sample, um, of course, we've run out of room to finish the other row, but what will happen is that with this uh, pattern repeat, you should be finishing the row with the nine free on the other side. It'll work out. I think Hannah used the stitch number, the stitch count of 130. Now, because this is just a small little stroller blanket, we're finding those are actually really handy to give as gifts. Um, especially when you're using this cotton, it takes a while to work up a little bit. So just a small little throw to put over the baby in the stroller really is a nice size. Perfect, nice little gift. Um, but easy ways to make this bigger is to just make it with chunkier yarn. Uh, without adjusting, you know, the 130 um, base chains. That will give you a really nice, if you use a size four weight acrylic, you'll get a much bigger blanket. Probably, I would I would guess around more like the 32 inch size, maybe even 34. You could put a thicker border, any of that. But I'm going to stop right here so I think you can understand the counting. And let's go ahead and go to the border just to do the border. So basically though, you know, you can look at the pictures on the website, you know, you'll just repeat these. Going up, 
finish with uh, you know the same amount another 10 rows of mesh at the very top okay so for the border you're going to work on the first round a round of mesh stitch so say we're finished oh, she has you tie off and weave in the ends it's totally up to you I think you could just chain one and turn and work your mesh stitch across this row here and then we also will need I'll show you how to do it down the sides all right one little thing we're going to do is in the corner work your single crochet chain two and work single crochet right into that same space now we're gonna mesh stitch down the side. So we're going to chain one. That will count for one row and then find the next row and work your single crochet. Chain one, skip a row, work single crochet. kind of gives you a nice little base to work into keeps the border relatively even and one thing I like about cotton is it's very what I like to say blockable is um, if you find that you know the blanket is a little bit wonky you can either completely submerge it in water give it a little wash and lay it out and pin it into place and it'll be a much more even blanket or you can simply use a spray bottle um, and then kind of just really press it into place it's very nice with cotton this this brand of cotton has just a little bit of acrylic in it too makes it really soft very easy to work with okay we're down here at this corner stitch so again right here maybe you have woven in the tail before you began, doesn't matter. Remember, two chains. Now across this bottom, you can kind of see the bottoms of the chains where the single crochets are. That's where I'm choosing to insert the hook. Here we go, right there. All right, so since I chose to chain one and turn, my corner's kind of up here. So I'm gonna use this um, last single crochet to just chain two and kind of just turn that into my corner right there. Since this one's the first stitch of the row. And I will slip stitch to that like so. That was the end of round one. Now we don't need to turn. We're just going to chain one. We're going to work our little shells around these chain one spaces. So the shell is a five double crochets. Just like that. And then we're going to slip stitch into the chain one space and slip stitch into the next chain one space. Just like that. It's kind of doing a little bit, a little variation. Now, so we're only going to be working into these chain one spaces. Let's work five double crochets oh these are so cute and then you just easily you know just you're looking for those spaces one and two 
and then slip stitch into the next. So we get, we get to ignore those single crochets on this round. And there's our fifth one. Oh, that's adorable. Love it so much. Okay, I'm gonna finish that to the corner and I'll show you how I work around the corner. All right, so here we are to the corner uh, where those chain two spaces were. And all we simply need to do is just keep no change, just slip stitch one, slip stitch two, and then get working on our little shell. All right, so I'm going to continue working around the whole edge of the blanket. And when I get back over here, I will just simply join with a slip stitch and uh, we'll call it good. It'll be so cute. So thank you so much for stopping by to get the tutorial. More pictures are on our website at daisyfarmcrafts.com. If you're only seeing this on YouTube, head to the um description of the video tutorial we have lots of links that will go to the website we will have links that will go to the yarn if you're interested in getting this from yarn inspirations uh it is on they sell it at joann's and michael's as well but a for sure place is on yarninspirations.com and we'll have a link for that too um we are stitch ambassadors for yarn inspirations so if you do decide to purchase we may receive a little bit of compensation so we are really grateful that they sponsor daisy farm crafts so that everything can be free on our website so anyway thank you so much and you have a wonderful day